Emeril Lagasse, welcome to Emeril Live. Hey, you know, nothing pleases a crowd more than shrimp. Oh, yeah, babe. And every culture has their own take on how to serve them. So tonight I thought we would go on our own international shrimping adventure tonight. Oh, yeah, babe. An international shrimping adventure. <laughs> Speaking about adventure, give it up for Doc Gibbs and the Emerald Live yeah. Band. <laughs> so if it's okay with you, we're going to cast out the nets tonight right here on Emerald Live. <laughs> How is everybody doing tonight? Okay. We're doing fantastic here. Fantastic. Shrimp. Ooh. Yes. My favorite. Oh, yes. I know, buddy. <laughs> Let's see what's on the menu tonight as far as this shrimping adventure. Hello, Jay. Check this out. We're going to begin with a little tapas, a little small plate. But we're going to do that with some shrimp and chorizo sausage. And then we're going to... Uh, let me see if you know where we're going on this international <laughs> journey here. Shrimp with tomatoes and feta cheese and orzo. Oh. And then a little Indian... I guess that gave it away. A little Indian-inspired shrimp with coconut and chilies. And then a little shrimp Fried Diablo. Oh. Oh, yeah. We're going to begin with a little uh, chorizo, or as my friends in Fall River would say, chorice. Chorizo. Any kind of nice Spanish... Portuguese kind of sausage. You want to sort of cut it on a bias. Big piece like that, and I'll show you why. So that's... Uh, it's a little flavored, mostly with paprika seasonings. Has a small bit of smoke on it. Generally, they use a little bit of hickory or a hard wood. So uh, you can get it just about anywhere. From there... Once, as you can see, we've browned this for about four or five minutes, the chorizo. We're then going to take lots of onions that were sliced, and we're going to start adding lots of onions in here. Oh, yeah. Nothing like chorizo and onions, you know? <laughs> then, we don't want to season this too much because... The chorizo has a lot of flavor, some pepper. So we're just going to go slowly. And what we'll do is we'll start with a little salt. A <laughs> little bit of fresh pepper. We'll come back and re-season it later. Now, while that's happening, let's talk about shrimps for a minute. See, you can go down the street even after the storm in New Orleans and you have these guys that have these little ice chests, mm. little cardboard sign that says fresh shrimps <laughs> and you uh, stop and uh, buy fresh shrimp. Actually, today's the start of fresh shrimp season in the right. Gulf. All right. Shrimps are basically graded by size. 
but confusing. People think that the higher the number, the bigger they are, and it's the opposite of that. So these here are about a 2125 count. Well, there would be a 1620 count, which means that somewhere between 16 and 20, that would be how many there would be in a pound. So if you had U4s, big shrimp, that means you'd have four shrimp to the pound. If you had 80 count, 80 to the pound. So that's how that works. Now, what we're going to do is this. We're going to add some paprika to this. And there are many types of paprikas. Hot, mild, very spicy. We're going to add some garlic in here right now. And then what we're going to do is we're going to take a little bit of sherry, some good sherry wine. Oh, yeah, babe. We're going to take some sherry, and we're going to just sort of let that sherry work in the paprika. And then what we're going to do is we're going to take a little essence and season them shrimps. And then we're going to layer those shrimps right on top, just like that. And they have a little built-in thermometer in them, these little shrimps. <laughs> You'll see. When we come back, I'll show you how to finish this shrimp and chorizo tapas. And wait till you see where we're going. Stick around. <laughs> tonight here and I'm alive got this really really happy shrimp dish going right now you can see what I was telling you about these built-in thermometers you see that side see this side right here it's just almost cooked gonna turn the side over here now to finish that side and uh, they're just about cooked tapas particularly in Spain tapas bars little plates Sort of everyone specializes in their own little tapas. Could be a shrimp and chorizo. It could be some sort of uh, bruschetta with uh, maybe tomatoes on it. It could be another one could maybe specialize in tuna or sardines. But this is a very popular one. Usually uh, they have a little beer or a wine or a little sherry. Um, so now what I want to do before I finish this, we want to taste it. I'm going to taste the sauce with that paprika, okay, to see. Oh, yeah, babe. <laughs> now, I would tell us now that we need a little bit more salt, that we need a little bit more pepper, and um, we want to finish it with a, a bit of fresh parsley, the juice of one or two lemons. We're going to finish it with a little bit more sherry to fortify it on top. And then what I like to do, folks, for me, is I like to take some good olive oil right at the end, you know, that extra V stuff. And right as I'm going to finish this here, okay, I'm just going to put a little drizzle of some good Spanish olive oil or Portuguese. And then that's it. I'm taking it off the heat. I don't want the shrimp to cook too much. Small plates, tapas, that's what it's all about. So now they would say, okay, we'll get a few pieces of chorizo or chorizo and a little bit of shrimp and a little bit of that sauce right on there. <laughs> and then probably a little crusty bread off to the side. And there you have it, folks, a little tapas of chorizo. 
and shrimp. Serve some of that up in a minute. But first, we're going to go next to the uh, shrimp with tomatoes and feta and orzo. So this here, I want to sort of make a sauce first. And what I'm going to do to begin with, I'm going to take some of this good olive oil in the pan. I'm going to let that olive oil start getting hot. And then what I'm going to do is now I'm going to flavor this oil. So the first thing I'm going to do is add a lot of garlic in here. Oh, yeah. We don't want to burn it. And we're going to add a little bit of oregano and capers and then crushed red pepper and then basil. See, and we don't want to burn, but we want to extract that flavor of those spices. Can you smell that already? Okay. Once we start getting that smell going, we're going to take the juice of a lemon or two. Look at it, starting to do that. And then we're going to take some tomatoes and add the tomatoes right in there. And now we're going to let those tomatoes start getting all the flavor, all the yummies, all the yum-yums <laughs> that we put inside here. The garlic and the red pepper and the lemon juice is going to wake it up. All right, now, while that's simmering, while that's simmering, what we're going to do in this skillet here is we're going to take a little butter, flame about medium high. We're going to take some whole butter, a little bit. <laughs> See, the butter police is off today. <laughs> we're going to also add some olive oil, which is going to uh, sort of give it a little bit more higher smoking point. And then what we're going to do is we're going to go and get some shrimps. Now, look at the size of these guys. Huh? Right? Now, that's a shrimp. That's about a U10 or U12. So I've got a couple of them that I'm going to peel, and then I'm going to put these when the butter starts frothing. I'm going to put them in the pan. When we come back, I'll show you what they look like. Doc Gibbs and the Emma Lab. Hey! here tonight, shrimping around. We got a little chorizo and shrimp done with a little Spanish sherry out on the floor, out in the air. <laughs> I peeled those big shrimp, as you can see. And you want that tomato product, folks. You want that tomato product. I'm just going to season these shrimp with salt and pepper. And you want that tomato product to just keep reducing down. You see, we didn't have a lot of liquid in there, right? Well, hopefully, you just didn't fall out of the sky and join us here. <laughs> if you have, it's unreliable! <laughs> so, you can see now how thick it's getting because of the evaporation. So it evaporates, it's concentrating because there's no moisture in there. And then look at the shrimps. Look, they're already turning. You see that? Salt and pepper. Now, folks, I say this a lot. I'll say it again. What you want to do is save those shells, put them in one of those zip bags, and then what you want to do 
is freeze them. And then when you got enough of them, like a bag full, you can make a nice shrimp stock. It's basically just shrimp shells. You cover it with water, salt and pepper, maybe a bay leaf, a little bit of herbs, and 20 minutes, you got shrimp stock. Yeah. Now, <laughs> this is that Greek specialty liqueur, that ouzo. Oh, yeah, this stuff will whack your lights out here. <laughs> So we're going to add just a little bit of that, just to, just to kind of... Now, nah, what we do is this. We're going to take the tomato sauce with the capers and all the yum-yums. Look at this. And we're just going to put this in the bottom of a, a casserole. You see? We're going to spread it out like that. Then, the next thing we're going to do is we're going to hide the shrimp. It's a little game I play. <laughs> so look. One. You don't want to fully cook the shrimp. It's still like medium rare. See? Hide the shrimp. This is a lovely, lovely game. <laughs> but I'll show you what we're going to do is we're going to take the shrimp that we're hiding. Look at the size of these things, huh? See, we just gave it a little flavor with that ouzo. I guess we could go around France if we wanted to and use perno if we wanted to change the dish. All right, now what I'm going to do is this. Why throw this out? I mean, if anything, drink it. <laughs> so. Oh, yes. Don't be bashful. Get one of those fancy curly straws and just. <laughs> yeah, baby. <laughs> Now, what we're going to do to finish it, we're going to take a little bit more of that good olive oil. Shh, don't tell anybody. They'll all be doing it. <laughs> then we're going to get a little bit of this ouzo. Okay? Oh, yeah. <laughs> then we're going to get feta cheese. Okay? A little feta cheese. Okay? little feta cheese. We could put some olives, maybe. Yeah. <laughs> Take a little bit of parsley. And then, shh, we're going in the oven. 350 degrees. Hey, you, can you, is there any chance you got an extra hand there? <laughs> Thank you. What fantastic cameraman. <laughs> Unbelievable! A one-handed job! Mr. Yu! Oh! Amazing! So, we let the shrimp go in there and they're gonna stop bubbling and then the feta cheese is gonna stop melting and it's gonna get all oozing and all that happy stuff going on. When we come back, we'll show you what it looks like. Doc Gibbs! <laughs> Welcome back. If you're just joining us, shame on you. Emeril Lagasse here, and we're having a little shrimp adventure tonight. Mmm. Y'all having a good time so far? Before I start this uh, Indian-inspired 
shrimp dish. I, uh, with coconut and some chilies. Oh, yeah, so you get that sort of sweet and spicy sort of thing. Before we do that, the shrimp with the tomato and the feta cheese simmering, <laughs> bubbling, <laughs> getting happy. <laughs> so, I had the oven on about 350. You saw the shrimp are not going to take that long. You want to just start melting the cheese. And then... Look at that. Now, if you're at one of those Greek restaurants, sometimes what they'll do is they'll put some more ouzo on here. And then they come and light the match and, it, you know, ooh-la-la -la and all shishkoomba and all that stuff. <laughs> it's like, come on. Keep it real. So for me, why burn it out? <laughs> you know. For me, you just go in, get like one, maybe two. <laughs> maybe three. <laughs> well, somebody just got nixed off the list. <laughs> Not me. Again, maybe a little crusty bread. Maybe a little bit of chives. <laughs> That's my kind of meal right there. All right. Beautiful. Shrimp from around the world. All right, so let's go back now to this Indian-inspired one. And uh, first thing I'm going to use is uh, this stuff here called ghee, or G. <laughs> it's really ghee. So a lot of Asian cooking, Indian cooking, Moroccan cooking, they use this. It's basically uh, clarified butter. So if you don't want to clarify it, it sort of looks like, uh, kind of looks like lard, but see? 100% pure cow ghee. <laughs> People could take that in a lot of different ways. <laughs> so, moving on. We're going to take a little bit of that in the pan. Pretty, there we go. All right, so we're going to melt this down. And while this is starting to get hot, first thing that we're going to do for this dish to get the flavor like we did with the tomato is we're going to take some caraway seed and some mustard seed. And we're going to toast this. And what that does, can you smell that already? Yeah. It's like releasing like these oils and all this flavor. So we're going to do that. We don't want to burn it. We're just releasing, toasting the flavor. Once it's toasted, oh, yeah, baby. <laughs> Once it's toasted, we're going to go in with some onion. I'm using red onion. A lot of chili peppers. This happens to be jalapeno, okay? Oh, yeah, big. Big budget on this show. So now what we want to do is make sure that we're not burning the seeds. Oh, can you smell that already? Then what we're going to do now, 
Once this starts toasting, we're going to add some garlic to this now. Yeah. We're going to add a little salt. Just a little pepper. Even though we got jalapeno in there, we still need a little pepper in there. Then what we're going to do is this. Little tomato. Tomato paste. A lot of people don't know why they use tomato paste. They just... Why? <laughs> well, mother did that. <laughs> Grandmother did it. Great-grandmother did it. Don't know why. <laughs> tomato paste is like the glue. It's like the structure. So that's why we're using tomato paste. You could make a sauce with tomato paste. But what we're doing now is we're just working these flavors in. I'm going to turn the heat up a little bit now. And then I'm going with some coconut milk. Oh, yeah, baby. So we're going to start working these flavors in, extracting all the flavors from the onion and the peppers and the spices. When we come back, I'll show you how we finish this incredible Indian-inspired shrimp dish. <laughs> Stick around. We'll be right back. Thank you. Thank you. shrimped out here tonight. <laughs> Another great dish out there now. Shrimp, feta cheese, little spicy tomato caper. Oh, yes. <laughs> and then this Indian inspired. You see how the coconut milk now has worked in here? You see how the tomato paste has now given it structure? So now what we're going to do is this. We're going to taste this dish, and then we're going to see, oh, wow. <laughs> Got a little heat in there. <laughs> yeah. Now what we're going to do We're going to take the shrimp. We're going to season it. Salt. Pepper. And now we're going to layer them in here. Spread them around. Oh, yeah, babe. Now we want to just sort of get them submerged in the sauce. Now, meanwhile, you want to cook a little rice, cut through some of that heat. Not that spicy. Now, while that starts to cook, like I said, they got that built-in thermometer in there. Now we can turn the heat on. Let them finish. Fried Diablo. You can do this with scallops. You can do this with chicken. Mostly it's done with lobster. Okay? But we can do this with shrimp as well. So what we're going to do is we're going to get a skillet on. I'm going to let it start getting hot. Again, some good olive oil. a little. It's good for you. 
Now, there's a trick to this that I want to show you. Very simple ingredients. Onions, lots of garlic, little bit of tomato paste, lots of crushed red pepper. That's what gives it that Diablo. <laughs> See? Fry Diablo. <laughs> it's amazing, this cooking thing. And then a little tomato sauce. Now, before we do that, see how the tomato paste is really starting to thicken? This sauce, the shrimp's cooking. You don't want it to stick now. Okay, and you don't want to overcook shrimps. Too many uh, times people overcook them and they get tough. So you just want to both sides should be pink. Maybe another minute on here. Now, while that's happening, I can feel the heat. So now I want to get the flavor. Okay? Watch. The flavor. The Diablo. We don't want to burn them. Once you, oh yeah. Once your eyes start doing this kind of thing, <laughs> then you add the onions in here. And then you want to just kind of shake them up a little bit. Then we're going to add the garlic, and we don't want to burn that. <laughs> now, what would be really good is if we had a little wine. I think we got a little wine. So let's add a little wine. All right, now, while I'm in here, more shrimps, okay? While that wine is reducing out, we're going to add a little tomato paste. Why? It's the glue. It's, it's the foundation. There's a quiz at the end of the show on this here. That's right. Whenever you're in doubt of why you're using tomato paste, blame it on your grandmother. Now... We're going to mix that in here. Now we're going to add the sauce. Okay. Now, while that's getting nice, a little salt. Mm -hmm. <laughs> now, the shrimps, look, you don't want to burn them. See how it's starting to stick right now? You don't want to do that. Here's how I like to finish mine. There's all different kinds of rice. Basmati. All different types. You want to have a little rice? Ah, what the... A big audience. Okay? Then we're going right over. A little bit of parsley. Okay, a little bit of parsley. A little essence. Bam! Just like that.
There you have it, a little Indian-inspired shrimp dish with a little coconut and tomato, oh, folks. Yeah. All right. All right, here's where we're going. Fresh parsley going in there. Linguini going in here. Little olive oil. A little salt. Hmm. <laughs> We're going to turn this down. We're going to get the spaghetti cooking. When we come back, shrimp, fried Diablo. Stick around. <laughs> around here from around the world. Look at this. Still pretty al dente. Now, you know, the culinary team here in, in the break actually sort of uh, tasted the sauce and went, woo! <laughs> hey, it's fiery. That's Diablo. I mean, that pepper, that's not messing around. And uh, if you ever get in a jam like that when you're doing this kind of dish, what I like to do, plus I like the flavor of it, is you can always take some good olive oil and cut it, okay? You can always add a little milk to it, too. Watch. I'm going to just get that olive oil in there. Now I'm going to take the shrimps, okay, seasoned. Now the shrimps are going to go in here. Then I'm going to turn the heat back up. And then we're going to check on our pasta. All right, so we got the heat back up here now. Then a lot of things, too, that you got to take into consideration when you're cooking pasta. People ask me all the time, why do I use a pasta setup like this? You know, there's a couple of reasons why. You know, years ago, not knowing, I used to do the colander thing, right? You know, the pasta's done, go in the colander, you know, a minute, and then, like, the pasta's all, like, stuck together. Does that happen to you? <laughs> yep. <laughs> the other thing that happens... You don't drain the pasta enough, so you've worked all day on your sauce, your meatballs, your gravy, whatever you want to call it, your sausage. It's been simmering on the stove for six hours, smelling up the house. Everybody's drooling, <laughs> getting ready to eat, and you didn't drain the pasta enough and it gets all the sauce that you've worked so hard on, all soupy, all watery, and now you're embarrassed. You know who you are. <laughs> so, my point is, that's why I use that sort of pasta gadget. See, there goes that built-in thermometer again with the shrimps. Turning them over. We don't want to overcook them. Yet are getting all that great flavor in there. Okay? Now we're going to check the pasta. <laughs> so you want it a little al dente. At least I do. And I wanted a little al dente because I want to finish cooking the pasta in here. 
My friend Mario Batali showed me this a long time ago. So what you do is this. The shrimps are ready. So what you're going to do now is you're going to go and drain the pasta the right way, even though that it needs like maybe one minute. You're going to drain it. See, drain it. Make sure you really drain it. And then the pasta goes in here. Now, one thing. You can add a little bit of the pasta water in here. Okay? You're just going to sort of lightly toss this thing. All right? And then there you have a little uh, pasta with shrimp, fried Diablo. Now, you'll get an argument of whether you should put cheese. I like cheese. I like crusty bed. And I'm also Emeril Lagasse. Thanks for joining me tonight. See you tomorrow, everybody. <laughs>